Hi everyone, this is take three. <laughs> Hi, I'm Rachel Tessman from StampYourArtOut.com and welcome to a another live paper crafting class here on Facebook. If you're watching this um, later on, you could be on Facebook, you could be on YouTube. I'm gonna upload it to YouTube and also to my blog. But <laughs> I'm laughing because this is the third time we have tried to get this uh, broadcast going. I hope that some people come back and join in with me at this point, I'm sure that they have given up, but <laughs> I'm going to start over because, of course, I'm going to bring this over to YouTube later on. Oh, Debbie, thank you for coming back. <laughs> Anyways, hi, Debbie. And so I'm starting over from the beginning. Um, so I just want to let you know again that if you comment and um, you, you post a comment to this while I'm broadcasting, you get entered into a prize drawing at the end. At the end, we're gonna give away uh, a couple different prizes and they're each gonna involve a full pack of designer paper and one of the cards that I either demo or show you. So that's cool. And I'll show you what those are later. And also, um, make sure that, let's see, what else was I gonna say? <laughs> I'm so distracted by the fact that we had, had the first two videos not work. It's starting again, yes, Deborah. <laughs> We're gonna give this a go. Um, just having internet issues. But um, yeah, let's just dive right in. So let's move over to the measurements. I'll think of it. I'm sure I'll think of what I was gonna say. But we'll um, move over to the measurements here. And you can see that for our card, we are going to make a slide out pocket fun fold card. Now I originally introduced this event as a different name, but I didn't think that the card really popped up. Um, so I, I'm, I'm calling it a slide out instead. <laughs> but it, here are the measurements for the consumable parts and here are the other supplies. I hope that no one takes offense to the fact that I changed the name on them. Um, but I just think it, it makes more sense to me, so sorry. Okay, and then these are the other supplies that you will need. And if you want to, you can take a screenshot of this so that you can uh, remember them. Um, otherwise, you can wait until Saturday, and I'll repost everything to my blog um, at stampyourartout.com. And then you can see close-up photos also and links to all of the products. You know what, uh, Twilia? I think it was my internet. So um, we had, we're having issues when there's too many devices that are connected in our house. And um, we had a couple extra devices on that normally we don't have on, so we're, we turned them off. And my mother is here, but she um, decided she's not gonna read comments. She's upstairs again, playing with the cat, keeping Lucky busy so that he doesn't jump up on the table. But um, yes, so let's go back and we're gonna skip this table set up here so that we can walk us from start from the beginning to the end of this card. And I did invite some um, beginning stampers. In one of my posts on my personal Facebook page, I, I said, you know, if you've never stamped before, you can do this. So, but this card is also for the, the um, advanced or more experienced stampers. So let's move to the table here. What you will need is your paper trimmer. And, oh, let me first share with you the beautiful papers. Now these papers called Under the Mistletoe are from our annual catalog, not in our holiday catalog. Let me spread them out so you can see the beautiful designs on all of them. You get 12 sheets, double-sided paper. Um, so there's two of every one of these. And then, of course, the flip side of the paper, and get this out of the way here, um, looks like that. So some beautiful designs for the holidays. But we're gonna also bring in some products from the holiday catalog, and we're gonna use new markers. We're gonna use a stamp set. So let's move that. And let's go ahead and do some trimming. So we're gonna take our Whisper White thick cardstock, and we wanna use thick because first of all, I think it's better for a card base, but we're also gonna use some alcohol-based markers on our paper, and we wanna make sure that it doesn't bleed through too far. So we're gonna trim our eight and a half by 11 cardstock in half the vertical way. So half of eight and a half is four and a quarter. So you'll just lift the arm of your trimmer like this, You'll place one end of your paper at the four and a quarter mark. Make sure that it's pushed right up to the top there or to the bottom if that's what you prefer. And you just slice. And this is my cutting blade. This is my scoring blade. I mark my scoring blade with the word score because you don't have to replace your scoring blade um, much, if at all. And this one you replace every once in a while because it does get dull. So now we're gonna turn it this way and we're going to score at two inches Hey, Barbara from Holland. 
And we're gonna score also at three and a half inches. That's awesome that you're able to join in. I'm guessing it's later in the day over there. So three and a half inches and two inches together is five and a half, which is half the amount of 11 inches long. So when you fold these two pieces in, you have your card folded in half, but just with two scores instead of one, right? So this is our card base. We're gonna set that aside. We don't need that right now. We're gonna take our other piece of Whisper White that we just trimmed, and we're gonna cut that at seven inches. But our trimmer goes to the six inch mark here. So we need to extend the arm on our trimmer. <laughs> Thanks for the uh, encouragement from those of you that joined on the first two videos. You're like, you can do it, you can do it. Yeah, hopefully the internet won't fail on me. <laughs> so at seven inches, you can see you've got this extendable arm. So we're gonna go to the seven inch mark and we're gonna trim. Hang on to that, because you're gonna need that. And then we're gonna rotate it to three and a half inches. Now you could go wider, you could go to the three and three quarter inches. Mark, there are some cards I've seen done this way with a slightly wider piece. But if you do it at the three and a half inch mark, you can make multiples of these cards. And if you're, say, a grandma who likes to give gift cards or money for Christmas, you can make multiples for all your grandchildren with this. Now we're gonna measure at two in, I'm sorry, we're gonna score at two inches and we're gonna score at a half inch. And instead of flipping it around and scoring the other side at a half inch, we're gonna just shove it down this way because we actually have measurements on this side of the trimmer too. And we can bring it right to the half inch mark there and score it. So this will be folded a little differently. We have a pocket that we need and then we need this to go backwards. So it's like a Z and this will go and attach to the top of our card base, the inside of our card base, and then this will hold the actual gift card. So let's put that aside for a minute and let's cut one more piece. This is our Whisper White that goes on the cover for an embellishment and we want that to be two and three quarters by three and a half. Let me make sure I got that right. Yeah, three and a half. <laughs> You'd think I would have this memorized. I've made this card at least eight or nine times now. All right, so there's our piece and we're gonna work with that first but we need to cut some designer paper. So yes, Chris, I'm back, and I'm so sorry for the off and on. All right, so we have some designer paper. This one's gonna go on the top, and we're gonna trim that to four inches, which I've already trimmed this section to. Four inches by three and a quarter. Three and a quarter, yeah, three and a quarter. <laughs> and then the other piece, which I've already trimmed to four inches wide, is going to be one and three quarters inches. Okay, these two will be layers on top of the card. You know, the benefit of this though, there's always good things that come out of things that you think are blah, scary or mistakes or whatever. The good thing is I have two card bases and pieces cut so that when I give away the prizes, it's gonna be a lot faster to create that second card. Yay, always a positive. <laughs> All right, so let's take this Whisper White piece now and we're gonna stamp and we're gonna use one of my favorite new stamp sets in the holiday catalog. This is called Spirited Snowmen, and look at how cute those images are. So fun little snowmen that are having a great time outside in the winter. We have some sentiments in there as well. And we're gonna stamp these images. Oh, by the way, this is in the holiday catalog. We're gonna stamp those images with a black called Tuxedo um, Black Memento. And Memento ink is great for using alcohol-based markers, okay? Oh yes, I should mention that again. Thank you so much. Um, that is Deborah. She said, thank you for your tips on making the most of our cardstock and designer paper. So on the second video, I think it was. <laughs> oh, we're getting some sun in here. We're getting some reflection on my face going on here. I have to move this paper out of the way. Um, on the second video that I'm going to delete, <laughs> I talked about how your paper is 12 by 12. And so when you cut four inch wide channels, you can get um, lots of um, pieces from your paper instead of trying to cut to fit the card base, which is four and a quarter inches wide. So cut it to four inches wide and it's, it's a nice layer, plus you have that white little border. So here we go, let's stamp this little snowman guy, pouncing up and down. This is one of our um, cloth, you know, basic kinds of ink pads not one of the Stampin' Up! ones, so you want to pounce up and down pretty tough to get that ink on there. The, the ones that Stampin' Up! carries, um, 
the, the classic ink pads, those are really, really soft. I'm trying to find, there it is, okay. I'm trying to find my cheater card, the one I'm gonna copy. <laughs> All right, so those are really soft. So you basically just lay your stamp on those and um, you will get your, your um, ink to just absorb right onto the surface of your stamp. It's crazy, you just literally you go like that and it's awesome. Okay, let's grab the sentiment and we'll stamp winter cheer. <laughs> Thanks, Mary Jo. She said, you're making the most of your technical difficulties. And you know what? I think it really was on my end. So any of you that were having connection issues, um, it, it was probably because we just had too many devices on. And I really was excited about my mom helping me out because I do miss comments. I do miss questions, but we just can't have all those devices on. <laughs> all right, so we've got the snowflakes and we're going to stamp that. We're going to fold the pocket up here and we're going to stamp that kind of in the middle of this upper section here like that. That will go on the inside of the card. So we got our stamping done. We're going to set those aside and cover up the ink so we don't get any ink on ourselves. I'm a clean stamper. I, I'm not good at making messes. <laughs> I try, but I just, I, I can't do it. All right. <laughs> so now let's go ahead and do some coloring. We have a few new blends markers in our holiday catalog. So let me introduce those to you because those of you that are totally new to alcohol based or Stampin' Blends markers, these are awesome. They make smooth, um, pretty color on your, on your projects. You can color on non-porous surfaces, which I will show you. Um, you can color pretty much anything with them. It's kind of like Sharpie marker ink, but it's not, um, it's a little different. Anyways, alcohol based markers. They're awesome. We have a light and a dark in shaded spruce now in the holiday catalog, a light and a dark in real red, much needed, a light and a dark in basic black, much needed. These are two basic colors, right? We needed those. And then these are some colors that we've had. We ha I'm going to be using the light and dark. Um, this is soft suede and the light pool party, the dark pumpkin pie, and then possibly using the color lifter, which is kind of like, I'd be using it as an eraser right now, but if I don't make, make any mistakes, I don't have to worry about, worry about using that, but it actually pushes the color back into where you want it to go. It kind of lightens it up and pushes it away. So the shaded spruce, I'm not gonna use on this card that I'm demoing, but I will show you the other card that I used with the same exact supplies afterwards and um, that one uses the shaded spruce instead of the real red. So let's bring this guy in. Again, if you're commenting and um, you're sharing the video and you, sh and you comment that you shared, those comments are gonna get you entered into the prize drawing at the end. Let's start with the carrot nose. We have two tips on our blends markers. We have a bullet tip. Let me open it this way. There's a bullet tip right there. And then we also have um, a brush tip Sorry, they're really tight caps, by the way, which is good because you don't want your alcohol colors to dry out. We're gonna use the bullet tip on this and we're just gonna color the nose just as is. Now, if you had a larger surface for the orange, you would probably wanna use both the light and the dark because you wanna get some nice shading on it. But it's such a tiny little spot here that I didn't want to um, worry about trying to show that to you. So I colored the nose and um, make sure that your markers are capped. They are designed so that they don't roll off the table, which is awesome. And when I open and close my um, blends markers, I hold on to them like this most of the time, and I use my thumbs to push away so that you don't have the cap flying off like this and any really juicy markers spraying ink onto your project. Okay, just a tip for you. All right, so now we're gonna use the brush end of our light pool party. And you might think, what's she doing? I'm adding some color onto the side of the snowman, um, his, his face, his body. And what this is doing is this is creating a shaded look, which you, you know, white can be shaded also, believe it or not. It gives it more dimension. It is uh, making him look icier too with the blue. If you wanted him to be less icy and more like a dull white, then you would probably use like a gray to do some shading. But here you can see, 
that I've given him a coolish white look and he stands out more from the background that way. I could also color around the background, um, like I could go outside of his body with the blue and that way he would pop off the surface that way instead. But I like to do his body, it's easier, it's a smaller area to color. Let's bring in the soft suede now. And I like to start with light. When I'm doing a combo of light and dark, I like to start with my light. Then I go to my dark and do accenting, and then I go to my light again and blend in. And it'll be kind of hard to see, but I'll try to hold it up. I'm gonna go ahead and color the stick arms and the stick legs all the way with shaded sprue, I'm not sorry, with soft suede. I'm leaving his boots white. I think his boots, when I colored them on some practice samples, looked way too dominant in the card um, when they were colored in. So I'm gonna leave his boots white. So uh, black was just too bold and brown was just too bold. So now I'm coming in with the dark marker and I'm going really close to the body. You can go even like underneath or something where less sunlight hits hits the, the sticks. So I just kind of put the color in a couple spots here. Hopefully you can see a little bit. Just did it in a couple spots. By the way, this image does have little speckly things around it, so it really is um, great for blends markers because it makes you think that, you know, like if your color does get outside there, you can't really tell because there's little speckles, like little polka dots all around these little images. It's kind of a fun, fun outline. So we'll come back in now and we're going to just blend, um, so we'll just go right over the dark and color it outward. We're making the color kind of transition from light to dark a little more smoothly in those areas. So if anyone was looking at this card close up, they'd be able to see. Now I did do a video, kind of a one uh, Stamp, um, Stampin' Blends 101 video that you can find on my YouTube channel that walks through Stampin' Blends uh, with a larger coloring surface a little bit better. Um, it is hard to see with this tiny little guy, but he really needed coloring and I love the blends markers. Let's go ahead with the um, scarf now and we're gonna start with the light and we're gonna color the whole scarf with the light. One other thing with blends is you wanna do small surfaces at a time because I wanna do his hat also but I don't want to worry about um, doing it right now because I want to just color one surface at a time so that our ink doesn't get too permanent and stuck in one area of our paper. You can still kind of manipulate the ink when you have it wet. So now I'm coloring dark areas on the scarf so it looks like light and dark. And I don't want to shade the scarf I like it that way. And let's go ahead and use the brush tip now and do the inside of the hat. Okay, and then we'll do the dark parts. And we'll just do those little circles there. Let's see if I can find a scrap really quick. So I'm gonna show you real basic blending of the colors. Let's just do it with the red and we'll do the brush end. So I'm gonna color with the red. Let's zoom in a bit here too. There we go. So I'm coloring with the red and then I'm gonna color a little bit with the, black, uh, the dark, the dark real red. And let's say I want that to be on the sides here. Okay. So I've colored some dark on the sides and you can tell there's a difference between the dark and the light. But then when you come in with the blends and you go right over where you just colored, you can see that it doesn't show as much of a stark line. And the more you go over an area, the more blended it looks. So dark to light, see? Isn't that pretty? <laughs> so now we just need the black. And the black, um, I did say light and dark, and I think that's because I was gonna try to use my reading glasses <laughs> and do these buttons. But I'm a little bit further away 
than where I was when I was making my samples. I'm leaving just a touch of white around them so that they look like they've got some shine to them. And then I'm just gonna tap them with the dark on the side. All right, so there's our fun guy. He's enjoying the snow. We're gonna assemble our fun fold card now. All right, so here we go. We're gonna take this part here and we're gonna attach some tear and tape adhesive, which I forgot to pull out, hang on. <laughs> All right, so we got our tear and tape adhesive and we're just gonna put that right across this one uh, half inch section of our middle part of our card and it tears. You don't have to have a scissors to take this and break it off. It just tears right off like that. This take a pick tool is awesome. It has a spatula end, it has a pointy end, it has an end on it where um, you can pick up fun little uh, gems and things like that, things that are loose on the table. We're going to use the pokey end to kind of get right up under here and lift off the backing on the tape. And keeping your card positioned like this, I think I have to zoom out just a little bit so you can see the whole card there. Keeping your card positioned like this, place the inner part flat so that the top of it is against the, the score of your card, okay? So it's like that. And then you're going to make sure that the sides are even here and you're just going to close it tight. There we go. We have that attached and it should look like this. This is going to become a pocket on the card. You don't have to punch a little hole um, through this portion of the pocket, but it's kind of fun to have that little look there. So we're just going to take our one and a half inch, I think it is. Yep, one and a half inch circle punch. And you can go about halfway or a little less than halfway, doesn't matter, and punch that out like that. Now we're going to take this piece and we're going to fold it over. And this is going to get closed with our ribbon, which we're going to color next. So let's take our fun ribbon out. This is one of my favorite ribbons. This is the Metallic Edge Silver Ribbon. Yes, Annette, that take a pick tool is amazing. I agree with you. <laughs> um, it does so many things and I should do like a whole video just on what it does, but you'll love it once you get it. This is our Silver Edge Metallic Ribbon. We have Gold Edge Metallic Ribbon as well. And we're gonna take our Stampin' Blends marker. We're gonna use the real red and we're gonna start at one end and we're going to color. And you just Go over it a few times like that. And you're gonna go all the length of the ribbon. So we have some paper underneath to protect our surface because the color does go through. Anytime you color with Stampin' Blends markers, you wanna make sure that you have protection underneath just like I had this paper here. But I'm using a lot more color when I'm coloring the ribbon. So, cause I'm kind of going over the surface multiple times. So that's why I doubled up and put some extra paper under there. Okay, so watch this, this is pretty cool. So once that's colored and capped tightly, flip it over, look at that. It colors both sides. Amazing. <laughs> it goes right through and colors both sides. We're gonna let that dry for a second and we're gonna bring in our rhinestones. And we're gonna take our light and our dark red, our brush tips again, now, oops, that's the bullet tip. Now be careful because with coloring surfaces that have kind of a, a sharper side to them, like rhinestones, you can get, um, here, let's hang on a minute. I'm gonna zoom in here so you can see. When you color surfaces like that, you can kind of ruin the brush tip of your marker. So you wanna make sure that you're not brushing or coloring too hard. So we're just gonna go around and we're gonna color a medium. I think I left the, yeah, I did. I left the, okay. I'm, I'm looking at my cheater card again, you guys. <laughs> you guys can't see it. Sorry. We're going to do a dark one that's small, and we're going to do a light one that's larger or medium size and a small one. And then we're going to use a small and a large, completely large, that are clear. Hopefully this will look good on the card. It, look, it looks good on the green one. Yeah, you can see the difference. Up close, you can see that this one here is darker and these two are lighter. So those we'll set aside because we're gonna use those to embellish at the end. 
Let's put our paper on now. We need our designer paper pieces. And you can really use either side. I mean, that would look good too, right? But I picked this side because I think it looks better. <laughs> so we'll run our snail adhesive on there. Snail is awesome. You have a cap on the bottom and it closes. And it's pretty easy to just take refills and put them in and out. This is awesome adhesive. So we're just putting some adhesive on that piece and placing it centered in this section here so that you have about an eighth of an inch of white showing all the way around. I think I might have to zoom out again. Am I too close? I don't know. Let's zoom out just a little bit. There we go. And then this piece is going to go on the top. Now if you like to use adhesive and you want to do the whole thing, by all means do that. But you can get um, the, the pieces to stick if you use a small amount and you also do what's called burnishing. You just kind of rub it. And you can use a bone folder tool also, which I don't have with me right now, but you can just press on there and it really makes the adhesive bond well. So now this is gonna stay inside here and we're gonna take our ribbon and we're gonna wrap it around. Isn't this awesome? We now have custom colored ribbon. I'll show you some other colors too. Um, but this is our real red metallic edged ribbon, which we don't sell in the catalog. We just sell the silver and gold, but you can make it real red. So we're gonna tie a bow. So what I did is I took right over left. Let's zoom in again. <laughs> I'm gonna show you some bow tie in here. So I did right over left. And the top one is the right one. I'm gonna tuck it down by just folding it in half. I'm not twisting it or anything. And then this one is gonna fold the opposite way and go up, okay? And don't worry about where your ribbon is right now. It could be over here, it could be in the middle, um, because you haven't put any adhesive on the ribbon. So you should be good at um, you know, being able to adjust it afterwards. So then what I do is I take my bottom one and I loop it without any twists. I take the top one, I bring it around from the left side over to the right, and I tuck it into that hole right there. And when I pull, I let go of where I was holding it. <laughs> and I do it faster, so it stays pretty tight. But the faster you get it at bow tying, the less you have to worry about it getting loose on you, right? And then you just adjust it by pulling on this and on the end of it at the same time so you can make it look fuller and pretty and then you can take and trim the ends with your paper snips for those of you that are beginning stampers you want to make sure that you assign one rib, uh, one scissors as your material or ribbon cutting scissors and one as your paper because paper will dull <laughs> you need to try that ribbon it's the best i need to buy stock in it because i use it all the time so now we have our fun little bow, and again, you can adjust it. See how I'm already able to adjust it? You can just do that. I kind of, I like it off to this side though. It just, I'm an off-center kind of person. I just, I don't know. There we go. Okay, now, <laughs> oh, you know what? I'm laughing. Look at that. We, our black disappeared. Our snowflakes <laughs> disappeared on us. We need our snowflakes. That's because I took the wrong piece. I took the piece that I cut during video take number two. Let's put this one back in there now. There we go. <laughs> I'm like, why is that blank? Did you guys wonder the same thing? All right, so there it is. And on the top, oh, let's do this. Where did the little gift card things go? Oh yeah. So you can stick one of these Target cards in there and look at how it like centers that circle. <laughs> I love it. Or we have a fun Santa. He's having a great time in the snow. You can stick him in there. On the top of our card, we're going to add some dimensionals behind this layer. And see, you can see, isn't that great? We had um, scrap paper underneath because those markers do go through even the thick whisper white paper. So we put a dimensional on the back of each. And these are just um, adhesive pieces that raise a layer or whatever it is up a little higher it adds uh, some great dynamics to your projects your cards and this will go right here and then we're gonna add the red accents and you could use your take a pick tool for this but I am still a fan of using my scissors because I have a little um, piece on each side of the rhinestone there 
Now I have to look at my cheater one here that you guys can't see quite yet. Okay, so this one goes over here. And this one goes over. You know, I can spend like 10 minutes just trying to figure out where my rhinestones go. So that's why I want to make sure that I'm looking at my cheater one. The cheater card. There we go. And this one can go over here. And one more. We'll put that one, oops, flip it back over right there. And I thought for a minute, is red good for the look of snow? But it's not really snow. It's more like confetti or something. <laughs> so that's how it works. So this, this little part slides open. You could put money in there. You could put band-aids in there. You could put a tea bag in there. <laughs> Anything that uh, fits in that, that little pocket. How fun. That'd be a great card to make for a bunch of people for the holidays. Here is the green version. This is done with the shaded spruce. Let's, uh, let's see if we can get my face out of there. There we go. Now you can see both cards pretty well. And the inside of that one is the same, but I have a different gift card in it. Fun, right? I have some other cards to show you too. Thank you, Sylvia. That's so sweet. <laughs> So this card is the one that um, my upline designed for one of our events that we just had. I put a little fun gift card in there as well. This uh, event that we had was a local event called Demos Galore. It was awesome. It was something that you'll have to like get a hotel for and come and check out next, next time we do it in January. <laughs> but we have demonstrations all the way around the room and then a make and take for every person that comes. And um, this is where we did that card. And then of course we have this challenge to our group so we have lots of people who are making these fun fold cards in our group now. And so I made quite a few, which I will share on my blog at later dates, but here is one more. And this is using the dashing, um, I, oh, what's the name of it? <laughs> it's called Dashing Along Designer Series Paper. So pretty, right? Isn't that a beautiful deer? And this is, I think it's called dashing along for the, the stamp set and dies for the bundle. But these are things that you can get in the holiday catalog along with, um, oh gosh, there's that ribbon again. So the paper is something that you earn for free, but I have extra packs of it. So because you are watching, because you are commenting and helping me out with this broadcast, those are the prizes. So I have two packs of dashing along designer series paper. Oh my gosh, that is huge looking on the screen. There it is. Two packs of these papers. And I have cards. So we would have um, a couple cards like this to give along with the dashing along paper. Um, just note that after I'm done with my broadcast, I will put a link to the holiday catalog. I'll put a link to the annual catalog um, and a couple other links in there too that are helpful like my website. So if you are someone that has um, never stamp before and you're interested in getting some of these products then I will have that link up so that you can find my my website which is stampyourartout.com and see if that one's the one yeah there it is stampyourartout.com um, if you're a demonstrator or you already have a demonstrator please order from that person or from yourself but um, yes if you're new to this I would welcome uh, any new customers that want to learn how to do this I um, and I will walk you along all the way in your crafting needs. So um, that's, that's that. Now we gotta draw for prizes. This is so exciting. So let's go to our computer. I wanna make sure I have the right screen up. I love it when I see people win and we all cheer for them. So let's move to the computer and let's get that out of the way. We're gonna refresh the posts. <laughs> That paper is lovely, isn't it? So what you do, this is what people have done before that have told me that they've won, is they think to themselves, I wanna win, I wanna win, I wanna win, <laughs> and it works. So, you know, do that, right? All right, we're refreshing the posts. Pretty soon I'll have this thing up here done scrolling. Uh, there we go. We've got some comments here. We're gonna pick a winner from 256 comments. And who is that first winner gonna be? By the way, if you live outside the US, I can only send you the card. I think I've said that in past videos, but I can't send product to you, but I will send you a card, okay? I can do that through the mail. Our first winner is Carmen Torres. Yay! Congratulations, Carmen. And our second winner is, who is it gonna be? 
Jan. Congratulations, Jan. I'm guessing that her comment was actually like a little emoji or picture because <laughs> it's not showing up down here. So we'll have to ch uh, chat with her, see her post later on and see what that was. Thank you and congratulations to both of you winners. Let's see those cards one more time. So you can, oops, <laughs> hang on, hang on. There we go. There's the cards. You can glance at them one more time. Those are our fun little slide out pocket fun fold cards. And again, directions will be on my blog, uh, hopefully by Saturday. And um, you can always come back to this video and find a link for it too. Thanks everyone. I'm glad that you joined me. Go stamp your art out now, right? <laughs> Bye.